And then we talked about the circular motion. For circular motion problems, we just、uh, take care of them usually, just like force force problems. The only thing is、uh, we get this thing called the centripetal acceleration, which is、uh, v squared over r, and we know this centripetal acceleration always goes towards the center. For example, we have circular motion in horizontal circles, like a person standing on a merry-go-round, a spinning merry-go-round, or a car on a level road making a turn, a circular turn. Let's say the mu s between the tires in the road is 0.6, and the circular turn has a radius of 20 meters, and we're looking for the maximum speed the car can have without skidding. Okay, so. Actually, for both of these cases, let's see. If the person is doing circular motion, the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration, goes towards the center, which means that this acceleration has nothing to do with the vertical forces. So mg and normal force cannot contribute to the centripetal acceleration. And on the person, the only horizontal force is friction. So friction must be the one that's、uh, providing the centripetal force. Okay, for the for centripetal force for the centripetal acceleration. Same thing over here for the car. If the car is on a horizontal road making a circular horizontal turn, the acceleration goes towards the center, which is a, a horizontal acceleration. It cannot be provided by the mg nor the normal force because they are vertical. So only the only horizontal force on the car is、uh, the one that goes、uh, towards the center. So the It's the friction. Friction is the only horizontal force、uh, acting on the car, so the friction has to be the same in the same direction as the this is the centripetal acceleration. Okay, the friction. This the friction. If the car is not skidding, this is a static friction. The static friction has a tendency against the、uh, well. The static friction is against the tendency to slide. If this car is making a circular turn. The people in the car and the car itself, they would、uh, have a tendency to lean outward. The car has a tendency to slide outward. That's why this、uh, friction goes inward. So when we write the net force equals to m a, there will only be friction in the horizontal direction. So the net force is friction, and that equals to m a since it's doing circular motion. The acceleration is v squared over r. And if we're looking for the maximum speed, that means that we're looking at the maximum friction, which is、uh, mu s times the normal force. And in this case, the mu s is 0.6. The normal force is m g, and、uh, that equals to m times the v squared over r, the radius 20. The m's can cancel; it doesn't matter. So the, you will find the speed in this case to be 11 meters per second. And we've done problems involving vertical circles. For example, this roller coaster is making a loop in the, a vertical circle, and this one is a water cup with water that's tied on a string and、uh, whirled around in a vertical circle. Suppose、uh, we're looking for the minimum for、uh, mi minimum speed for the cup and the coaster to make the loop. If it's minimum speed, that means the coaster is almost going to fall. And what does that mean? It means the coaster is almost going to lose contact to the track. That means、uh, the normal force、uh, is zero. Or for the case of the water cup, that means、uh, the cup is almost going to fall. That means、uh, the string is not taut. That means the tension is zero in the string. And so, if you draw the force diagram, that means to say for the coaster, there will only be m g because、uh, The normal force uh, the, from the track is、uh, zero in this case, and then we can just write the net force equals to m a. The net force will only be m g, so it's m g equals to m a. That means、uh, a equals to g. So you make g equal to the v squared over r, and you'll be able to find the minimum speed. Of course, that's、uh, it, you know we、we'll、have to give you the radius to do that. For the roller coaster or for the water cup, if we whirl it 
around at a faster speed, that means uh, the normal force is not going to be zero, the tension in the string is not going to be zero. In that case, uh, you just draw the force diagram, you have mg and normal force both go down, so the net force will be mg plus the normal force, and we just set that equals to ma, we'll be able to find what we need. We've also done these problems with a car that's traveling on hilly road. And so if it's on the top of the hill, this car is doing circular motion, the acceleration goes towards the center, and the center will be down there. And the, if it's at the bottom of the hill, the center will be up there, so the acceleration will go up. And then we just have to draw the force diagram and then write the force equation. So for this, you would have mg and the normal force, the same thing over there. If the car is going to become airborne, that means the car is going to lose contact to the road. In that case, it means uh, the normal force is zero. Now, occasionally, uh, the for this v squared over r, the speed may not be given directly. For example, uh, let's say if the problem gives you that this thing, a turntable that rotates at, uh, say, 33 RPM, 33 revolutions per minute, then to find the speed for us to use in those force equations, we can just do the distance traveled divided by the time. Okay, and since this is a revolutions per minute, it will be convenient for us to look at one minute. So the ten time is 60 seconds. In 60 seconds, in one minute, the object goes around 33 times, 33 circles. So the distance traveled will be 33 times the circumference 2 pi r. So if you know the r, you'll be able to find the speed. There are two kinds of accelerations. The tangential acceleration, which is always tangent to the path, and the centripetal or radial acceleration. The tangential acceleration is responsible for speed change. The centripetal or radial acceleration is responsible for the direction change. So let's see if an object is going along this path. Okay, so right over here, if I ask you about the direction of the velocity since the object moves this way, the velocity is always tangent to the path. Now this object can have these two accelerations. If there is a speed change, there will be a tangential acceleration. If the speed is a constant, then no tangential acceleration. If the object is speeding up, that means the tangential acceleration will be in the same direction as the velocity. If the object is slowing down, then the tangential acceleration will be in the opposite direction. So when we say that if an object is speeding up, the velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, we're talking about the tangential acceleration. Now because this object is moving on a curve, it also has a centripetal or radial acceleration. I mean, they are the same thing, okay? Just the, the, because the centripetal acceleration goes towards the center, it is along a radius. That's why it's also called a radial acceleration. The acceleration will go towards the center, so the tangential, I mean, sorry, the centripetal acceleration will go towards the center. So if an object is speeding up, it would have two components for the acceleration. And if you combine those two together, you'll get the total acceleration. A typical problem that's related to the tangential and centripetal acceleration is a pendulum that is released from rest over here and it swings back and forth over here. Let's say that's the highest point and this is the lowest point. And uh, I can ask you about the velocity and the, the directions for the velocity and acceleration at these two locations. And of course, the velocity, if this thing is swinging down, the velocity would be going that way, velocity is always tangent to the path. And what is the velocity over there? At the highest point, the velocity is zero. As for the acceleration, let's see. At the lowest point, this part is leveled. So there is no speed change right at that moment. So there is no tangential acceleration, but it's moving on a curve. So there is a, a centripetal acceleration. And that's it. And for this one here, it is uh, on a curve, but there is no centripetal acceleration because uh, what is centripetal acceleration? It is v squared over r. If the speed is zero, there is no centripetal acceleration. But we still have tangential acceleration. Let's see if this pendulum bob is going up 
if it's going to be slowing down. If it's slowing down, the acceleration and the velocity they are opposite. So the tangential acceleration goes that way.